So there might be a lot of ways to communicate between applications that are written in different languages. In this video, we're going to see how to communicate between Node.js and C++ using a file and listening for its changes that will be like a signal to both applications. So stick with me to find out more. guys medium guy here in this video we'll see how to communicate between an application written in node.js and another one in c++ there might always be a lot of ways to do this there might be a lot of tools to use to do this but using this way you can always communicate between applications that are written in any languages so in a schematic way to show you guys how this is going to work so in here we have an application written in c++ in here we have a json file and in here we have another one so in our case written in node.js so the way that this is going to work is the c++ application will write the changes to the json file and the node.js application will listen to the changes on that json file and if it detects anything it will read the file and have all the data that has been modified on the JSON file and can manipulate it the way that it wants. So using this way, you can communicate between applications written in any language. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So in the last video, we saw how to write and compile C++ applications in Linux just in a few simple steps. And in this video, we're going to do the same just our logic will be a little bit complex and we'll be using the JSON package in C++ and we'll try to create a JSON file so that our node application will listen to that file and detect the changes. So first of all, I'm going to create a C++ file. So I'll say main.cpp. In here, the first thing I'm going to have my headers. So I'll say include io stream another i'll say include f stream and another one i'll say include a string which will be json.hpp so this is the thing that i'm going to import the package that i'm going to import so in this repository there is a file called json.hpp which lets us to create JSONs in C++ and then we'll write the JSON that we created in the JSON file. So this is the JSON.hpp file. I'll try to download it. I'll open it. So I'll copy everything that's inside this. In here I'll try to create the file with the exact same name. So I'll say JSON.hpp. I'll try to paste all the code from the source file that I just downloaded. This way I can simply include the json.hpp file that I just downloaded. The next thing I'm going to import my namespaces. So I'll say using json equals to nlo man colon colon json. Another one I'll say using namespace std and the next thing I'm going to try to create my main function. So I'll say int main. And in here I'll try to create my JSON and write it to a file. So I'll say JSON obj. I'll say obj with the index of name will be equal to any string. I'll create another one for age. So I'll say obj age will be equal to 24 just don't forget the semicolons another one i'll say obj with the key of role and i'll input some value so the next thing i'll say of stream file i'll pass a name to the file so i'll say for example output Dot json i'll say file set w 
I'll pass for obj and and ln and next I'll try to close my file and just simply I'll say cout file created and I'll say return zero and a semicolon so my logic of my C++ application is almost complete so if I want to try to compile and run this I'll switch to the terminal in here all I need to say is make main this will try to compile so apparently I have forgotten to put the semicolon after this line so I'll save the file again I'll try to say make main in here I see that the compilation has been successfully finished so if I hit refresh in here I'll see that a main file has been created in here so if I say dot slash main I should see a JSON file created as you can see over here I have the exact same JSON data that I passed in my application so so far in here we can see that our C++ application is working correctly so the next thing I'm going to create my node application so the logic is so simple it will just listen to a specific file and if any changes has been made to it it'll try to read the file and have the data in its runtime so I'll try to create a JS file I'll say index.js of course I need the fs library so I'll say const fs equals to require fs I need the path library so I can address my file my JSON file so I'll say const path is equal to require path the next thing I'll try to provide my JSON files address so I'll say const JSON file is equal to path.join under their name and my files name which is exactly the output.json so the under their name is the directory address which is the file that is being run is located in that so the path.join will try to join these two values and as a result I get the full path to my JSON file so I can manipulate and another variable I'll say let JSON data initially it'll have an empty object the next thing I'll try to create a function so it'll try to read the file with the given location so I'll say const read JSON file is equal to async with a parameter which is the file location inside this I'll say fs.read file I'll pass my file as the option I'll pass utf8 and as the callback I'll pass a function that will run after the read file function has been executed so apparently this will have two parameters one for error and the other one for data so inside this I'll say if error return console.log error if there is no errors I'll try to say json data is equal to json.parse the data that I read from the json file and another one I'll say console.log json data so that I can see all the data has been read from the JSON file so if I say read file over here and I try to run my script so I'll say node index.js I have an error over here so again apparently I forgot to pass a correct form of a function so I pass the arrow function and again I'll try to run so again I forgot to pass the JSON file inside the JSON read file function so it didn't know which file to read so I'll pass the JSON file 
and again I'll try to run my script this time I can see that the script has successfully read the data from the JSON file so the thing that remains is that we listen to the file and detect any changes so I'll say fs.watch file again I'll pass the JSON file as the file again I'll have a callback function so I'll say function I'll pass a and b as the parameters because I don't need those parameters and in here all I need to say is console.log file changed and again call the read json file and pass the json file to it so it tries to read the file again and get all the data that is inside it and pass it to the json data variable and do any other manipulation that it needs to do so i try to save my file i'll switch to the output.json file in here i'll make it an empty object so i'll try to have another terminal next to this so i can see the changes so in the first one i'll say node index.js and as i can see there is no data in the json file and in the second terminal i'll say dot slash main the file changed and in the other terminal i see that it has successfully detected the file change and it's also read the files from inside that json file and passed it to the json data variable so this is a simple way to communicate between applications that are written in other languages of course there can be any other languages working with this exact same logic and of course there are other tools to use like for example rpc calls or maybe creating apis and calling apis between the applications and there might be other ways to implement these communications also like for example saving the data inside a database and listening to that exact same database in another application and if it detects any new data that is written inside the database it'll try to read those exact data so i hope you get the idea i hope you learn something new in this video if you have any questions just go ahead and ask me in the comments section please do like and subscribe and don't forget to watch my other videos i have cool stuff i'll put the links down below and also I'll put the link for my repository so you can have all the source code for this. And with that, I hope to see you in the next video.